Hello, Weechi peeps and family. It's your high priestess, your sister witch, Kathy. Talking to y'all from the darkness. <laughs> oh, how I have missed doing my little darkness videos. But of course, when I come to you all with my darkness videos, it is because... I want to enlighten you, give you some tools, witchy tips, little tidbits, lessons, you know, for those of you that follow me and for those of you who are, who are in my Secrets of Conjure Coven, all my little badass witches, all of you all. I'm here to spit some knowledge and some game to you right now, okay? Now have a seat, get you a drink. First thing I wanna touch up about is, and talk about is binding spells. Now, there is this thing going around on the internet about how you know, binding spells are all bad and things like that. And that is not the case. Come over here. Let me tell you something, okay? Binding spells are not all bad. There are some binding spells that are good for you. Binding spells that are good for your situation. um, Good for your relationships good for your family, things that you want in life, things like that, you know, and to be honest with you, a lot of practitioners will not tell you that. They will tell you uh, things about binding spells that, you know, that, that won't serve you or they'll try to put fear in you about, you know, practicing your own magic and craft and all that, you know, and... You know, really their their intention is really not to have you practice your own magic, but actually to come to them for the work and everything. And, and, and hey, you know, don't get me wrong. I understand that completely. You know, that's the business. That's how the game goes. You know, but if you're not scared and you're a seasoned witch, you know, you're beginning witch and, you know, you're just on your on your game and you're doing your thing, you know, you really need to, you know, get your hands in there and practice your craft. That's why they call it witchcraft, for example. You know, it's a practice. It's something that you have to, you know, learn. You know, you can't be afraid to practice witchcraft, hoodoo, voodoo, magic, or anything like that. You got to get your hands in there and get dirty. I mean, there's going to be a chance, you know, where you do something and it's not going to work out for you. I mean, it is what it is. And what happens is that when it doesn't work out for you, you know, you need to get your tail in gear. You need to get back up. And do a different spell or recast something. Re recast a spell. You need to get back in there, you know, and get your magic on, <laughs> so to speak. You know, you can't be afraid to do this because if you are afraid to practice and get into this, then, hey, you know, you're going to fail. The spirits are going to eat you alive, you know, different things like that. And, you know, it's really not what you want. I'm just letting you know that now. So you really want to, you know, think about what you're doing when you get into this. If you're afraid, then you shouldn't be doing it. You should hire someone to do it for you. you no, know, I agree with other practitioners on that. If you are afraid to get into magic or get work done for you know, like you're doing it yourself or whatever, then you need to hire someone to do it for you. You know. Um, especially if you're living with a Christian family, a religious family that doesn't uh, believe or uh, accept hoodoo, voodoo, 
uh, magic, you know, different types of African religions and things like that. If they don't accept that, then and especially if you're younger, a lot of you younger people, you know, you have to respect the place where you're living from now. I'm not trying to tell you all to revolt away from your, you know, Christian family and, you know, your uh, religious family, whether it be Islamic, whatever. I'm not trying to tell you to do that, but you want to respect the place that, you know, where you're living at. So definitely, you know, um, if you really need work done, then you need to consider, you know, maybe trying to do it in a private place where they're not going to find out about it or contacting someone that's going to actually do the work for you, you know. And so I'll just circle back around, you know, with the whole binding thing, you know, um, bi all binding spells are not a bad thing. You know, the only time you run into binding spells that are bad is when you're trying to bind someone that may not really want you, um, you know, someone that, uh, you know, it's like, you know, hell may freeze over before they'll be with you, you know, those type of binding spells, you know, I can see where a lot of practitioners will tell you, you know, well, you may not want that, you may be, you want to be careful with that, because a lot of times when you bind these certain people that don't want you really, um, what you'll get is them coming to you, and then, you know, they'll leave you, they'll come to you, they'll leave you, and then a lot of times they just won't give you that affection and love that you may want, but they'll still just want to be with you, you know, and that's why I tell a lot of people when they come to me for binding spells, are you sure this is what you want? Because, you know, it, with everything that I do and the spirits that I work with, if this is what you want, this is what they're going to give you. You know, it may not be exactly the way that you want it, but hey, they're going to be coming to you. They're, you know, uh, they're going to want to be around you. Sometimes you may not want to be bothered with that person or uh, you want to leave that person alone. But hey, they're not going to leave you alone because you're bonded to them and they want to see you eventually. They want to be with you. They want to talk with you. So that might be something that you want to think about before you come to practitioners like me to get work done. OK, now on a good note with binding spells, a lot of times you do want to bind the person that you're in love with. You want to bind your spouse to you. You want to bind your children to you. You want to bind your family to you, friends to you. You know, you don't want to let outside interferences or outside people come into your life and interrupt things, you know, in your happy life. I mean, this is what witches do. You know, if you're not a witch, you may not get that. But when you're a witch, this is something that you need to know. And you're going to bind someone. And you need to bind your family, the people that love you and all that, your children to you so they can behave and respect you. I mean, this is this is real stuff. This It is what it is. You know, so take that into account. When you're thinking about binding you know, there's a good way to bind, there's a bad way to bind, and all that. And I'm just saying that binding work is not all bad, you know. And a lot of times, you know, especially when you have uh, an attractive spouse or a banging-ass boyfriend or something like that, you definitely want to keep and bind that person to you so it won't be any outside influences trying to come in between your relationship, especially when he wants you, especially when you know or can feel he's not going anywhere. And, you know, you, you want to keep you both together. I mean, this is what witches do. People who are not witches don't get it. Okay? So with this being said, this is your high priestess. Your sister witch Kathy giving you all some binding advice from the darkness. <laughs> ah.